Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. So we're going to have a look at the JMA model for the next three months for today's second video. Uh, it's going to take us from next month, from September through to November. So we're going to go through the, ho the whole of the autumn uh, with this update. Now it's ahead on Saturday of the final, third and final seasonal model roundup to the autumn of 2017. We get something like 11 or 12 long range models together, see what they're all showing for the autumn, see if there's a consensus up within those models. And then on Sunday, we're actually going to release the gasworthies.com autumn 2017 uh, forecast. It's going to be quite a big weekend of updates uh, this weekend. Also on Sunday, we're going to have a sneak peek uh, for the winter as well, because when the autumn forecast is released, the bandwagon will roll on uh, to winter updates. So there's going to be a lot of lots of, of um, exciting uh, updates coming up for uh, this weekend. But as it's Today, we're going to have a look at the JMA for the next three months. The reason we do this, we, like to, we always like to isolate this one out because uh, you can get lots of information from the JMA and glean lots of information. But, of course, when we do the season one around us, because we've got another 11 or 12 long-range models as well, we haven't got time to go through everything that you can see uh, with the JMA. So we do touch on the JMA. It doesn't get included in that season one around up, but we can't go into it in depth. So I always like to take this one out. And sort of do an in-depth uh, look at it. So we'll start off with 500 bit of our heights from the North Pole down for the next three months. And then we'll go on and have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomalies from the tropical and mid-latitude view. So we're starting off here uh, looking down from the North Pole. This is the pole uh, up here, mid-latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere around here, uh, get rid of that and say that America and Canada are over there, uh, Asia, Russia is uh, over here, and Europe is over there, the British Isles, perhaps most importantly, this video is just here. So 500 millibars is an area in the at atmosphere, high pressure, low pressure, are being moved around by the jet stream. <coughs> Excuse me, on these charts, blue is going to be extrapolating to low pressure, and yellows, oranges, reds will be extrapolating to high pressure. So this is the 500 bit of our height only for September, uh, first of all, and we find that we've got an area of uh, below average heights very close to the northwest of the UK and in the Atlantic, and we're bringing the flow and the jet stream through uh, rather like that. So that looks quite an unsettled month, actually, particularly so for the north and west. You would expect uh, rain bands to be moving in across the country. The south and southeast should be drier, but I think all places would have some unsettled weather during the course of uh, September. Now we go through to October, and what happens is that the trough deepens in the Atlantic. So we have got quite a deep trough there, but we've also got a strong reef setting up across uh, central and eastern parts of Europe. So the jet stream is doing something uh, rather like that. So uh, we bring the jet stream in across the country. That could be unsettled, very unsettled perhaps, for the west. It could be quite a lot of rain in with that. But uh, the way the ridge and the trough are lining up, uh, we're probably bringing up quite a lot of southerly influences. So you'd actually expect that to be a very mild month, albeit potentially quite wet and uh, unsettled. And then we go through to November. This is three months away, so it's a very long way uh, out. The further out you go with these long range models, the more unreliable they become. Um, in November, it's a rather strange looking chart. We've got above average height centering to our west through the uh, mid Atlantic. So we've got a bit of a mid Atlantic ridge, possibly hinting that it's going up towards Greenland a little bit as well. Um, and then this area, it doesn't look blue, but this looks like it's a trough within the 500 millibar flow. Uh, to me. So I think the jet stream could be doing something potentially a little bit like that. Uh, it's very different to what's going on in um, in October, for sure. Uh, and, well, it, I wouldn't be that surprised if it's placing us on the cooler side of the jet stream a little bit uh, there. It looks like we've got quite an Atlantic influence still, so the air's probably still coming in from the west generally. But um, I think there's no real trough within this chart, so it does look a very bizarre looking chart, but this area here, to me, that looks like it's a trough, and it looks like the jet stream, therefore, should be doing something a bit like that. The central uh, parts of Europe, by the way, northern Europe, that could be really quite cold uh, in November. 
let's see whether my interpretation is backed up by the um, temperature and precipitation anomaly. So this is a mid-latitude and tropical view. We've got the equator uh, sitting just here, of course, and then to the north of the equator, we've got the northern hemisphere there. To the south of the equator, we've got the southern hemisphere. You can't see the poles, but the south pole is uh, down there off the chart at the bottom. And the north pole, we're just looking at the north pole view down, but the north pole is up here, uh, again, off the top of the chart. So that's how that should be looking. Um, America is there, Asia, Russia over here, uh, and then Europe is there. The British Isles is in the top right hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. Right, everybody knows where everyone is. Let's recap on what the anomaly was 500 meter height anomaly was for September. So we have an area of below average heights out to our northwest, and it looked like we bring the jet stream through rather like that. You'd expect this to be quite an unsettled month. So let's have a look at the precipitation anomaly. It is coming out wetter than average, so above average rainfall uh, for September is being predicted by the JMA for precipitation of a temperature, I should say. Um, so most parts of the country are average to a little bit above average, but in the West, actually, it's a bit cooler than average. Overall, not a big deviation, so a fairly coolish and unsettled month is being predicted for September. The mean wind flow, and uh, these are always a job to work out, these black arrows, but the mean wind flow is generally from a west to uh, northwesterly direction. So that's the reason the temperatures are struggling a bit. And, of course, the low pressure is what's producing the uh, rain. Right, through to October. Again, recap of the 500 millibar height. So we've got uh, this trough strengthening in the Atlantic. It did look very unsettled. But we've got this big ridge over here. Uh, in the uh, central and eastern part of Europe. And between the two, thought we're probably doing something a bit like that uh, with the flow and with the jet probably bringing up the air from the south. So this could be very unsettled, we thought, but maybe also quite mild. So let's have a look at precipitation. And uh, it's still coming out more or less with a wetter than average month. So we are throwing up rain bands with that deep trough in the Atlantic. The difference, and it's not to be ex uh, not to be um, unexpected, really. The uh, temperature anomaly is going warmer than average. So uh, a warm, wet month is being predicted for October. The mean wind arrows are uh, looking something uh, like that. So it looks like we are probably bringing up those southerly, southeasterly, or maybe even southwesterly winds. Uh, always job to see those arrows, of course. And then finally we go through to November. This, out of all the three months, it did look rather strange, so it's very hard to interpret quite what this is doing. We have got this ridge through the northern and central part of the Atlantic, mid-Atlantic ridge, essentially. And then nothing else really to work with, but we thought there might be a trough uh, through this central part of Europe, which, which might be doing something a bit like that with the flow and uh, with the jet stream. So more or less still on the mild side of the jet there, but the trough through central Europe uh, places that uh, cold trough uh, quite close to us. For precipitation, it's recovering to drier than average. So it's seeing a drier than average month. That's because the Atlantic is being blocked off uh, a little bit. What about the temperatures? So there's no real uh, cool temperatures to go out there in November. Actually, it's looking milder than average for us. And where I thought that trough would be placed through Central Europe, that area is also coming out milder than average. What are the uh, mean wind flow uh, arrows doing? So uh, we can see that uh, more or less we're bringing in westerly winds. But if you go over here, you can see that actually eastern central parts of Europe, again, this easterly uh, sort of flow. And that easterly flow is going down towards France and Spain and Portugal as well. So I think there's some sort of trough there that the model is uh, playing with through central parts of Europe. But it's not a strong signal. It's not a strong enough signal to be bringing cold and average temperatures to Central Europe, which you would expect if there's a trough sitting across Central Europe and you pull down the air from the north and the northeast. So you've got to do a bit of interpretation uh, for November, and it's, it is playing with an idea of a trough through Central Europe. For us, what we're looking at is a fairly mildish month with, a, with an Atlantic influence, because that trough only has to deepen and back west a little bit 
And that will also place us within those cold uh, east north east winds. So November's a bit of a joker in the pack out of this three, um, of, out of these three months. It's a little bit uh, difficult to interpret what it's doing. September and October, much clearer cut. Uh, so for September, it's an unsettled month. Temperatures are quite cool and rainfall is above average. Uh, for October, it's predicting a very mild month, potentially, with quite a lot of southerly influences, but with a deep trough in the Atlantic, we're throwing up uh, rain bands. So warm and wet and cool and wet, really, um, for September, cool and wet, October, warm and wet. And then November, that's the difficult one to decipher. I think we're going to wait for next month's update, really, to uh, to sort of hope that the signal strengthens for November. Potentially, I think, for Central Europe, it could be uh, hinting at quite a coldish uh, sort of month. What that would mean for us, it would depend how far west that trough manages to back. Right, so the general scene is for an unsettled early and middle autumn, and it's a bit uncertain. Uh, we'll add this to the seasonal model roundup, of course, that we're going to do on Saturday, where we get all the other long-range models together. We'll see if there is a consensus for those um, long-range models on Saturday, and then on Sunday, it's the autumn 2017 forecast from gasworthies.com. Come back later on for today's third video, which is going to be the final update for the late uh, summer bank holiday weekend. By the way, the first video today was looking at where next week's 10 days. That just extends into September. And we also had a look um, at uh, the origins of the shipping forecast and the Met Office and all that kind of thing. So that's here on the homepage. Just scroll down a bit and uh, it's above the pollen count. Right, come back later on for the third video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.